In that darkness, the White Walkers came for the first time. They swept through cities and kingdoms, riding their dead horses, hunting with their packs of pale spiders, big as hounds. Here's your look at the 3-0 Game of Thrones White Walker 1-6 scale collectible figure. The White Walkers are an ancient race of humanoid ice creatures who come from the far north of Westeros. After remaining hidden for thousands of years, they have returned and have been sighted by several sworn brothers of the Night's Watch and countless wildlings. However, most who live south of the Wall believe them to be nothing more than creatures of legend. Three Zero's skilled artists put their hands to the cold hands of death finally releasing the White Walkers that can be added to your existing Game of Thrones collection. Before winter comes for us, let's first figure out how tall the White Walker stands. It appears that the Walker is a little bit taller than standard 12 inch tall figures. How exactly tall? Let me go ahead and show you. You're looking at a figure that stands 13.1 inches in height, which goes, let's go ahead now and switch that over to centimeters. Centimeters, you're looking at almost 35 and a half. Exactly, you're looking at 33.4 centimeters tall. What I think I'll do first is have a look at the deluxe offerings. This is the deluxe version, by the way, of the White Walker. And what will differ this from the standard release are the following accessories. One of which being a faux leather skirt. As you can see, it's split and strapped by these straplings of leather, faux leather fabric. Underneath that, you have a little bit more of a tattered, almost uh, cotton or slightly burlap uh, type of material and you've got some beads running down from the front of it as well. It's got a kind of wear and age to it that you would come to expect from the paintwork that 3-0 puts into their pieces. And this will attach via, you know, you just unvelcro this and this will just fit around its waist. Now in order to do all of that, we would have to disassemble, take apart all the armor that's on it. Hold that idea, I will get back to this. Before we have a look, of course, we're going to look at all the extensive details to the standard release. But remind me, I'm going to go back and we're going to dress this guy down, hopefully not reluctantly, to the White Walker. And we're going to dress it up and I'll show you what the deluxe version looks like. While we're also on the topic of deluxe offerings, 
one of which also can be offered up from 3.0 if you get the deluxe version, is a pair of bare feet. Well, not completely bare. Half the foot is fully visible. You can see the long, jagged uh, toenails coming out from the, the front foot section that's visible. The rest of it has been wrapped up almost in the same way as an Egyptian mummy and done up in almost these little tattered rags. There's still an open area in which uh, you can attach this to the under leg, basically the tab point, the ball joint at the bottom of its leg, will of course attach into this. This will of course revolve around taking the feet off, dismantling all the armor, and then putting on. You're really not going to be putting on extra things other than really just the feet, and then again the faux leather skirt. But if you are looking an ankle, and I always do like to get the deluxe offerings because it gives me the opportunity then to change out if I want to do something a little bit different with the White Walker. Because there's so much drastic change that's going to be involved, if you can also believe it as well, which you'll see eventually in this review, there's a lot of detailing here that you can't even see because the armor is over top of it. They've fully realized this figure underneath all of this. This isn't just a one six scale buck body. No, in fact, 3.0 has sculpted fantastic details underneath that, all of which will come into play when we switch out to the deluxe version, incorporating these feet here as well. Here's what the other things come though, include with the figure if you're looking to get yourself the standard release. Now keeping in mind, the standard release is gonna have this. The deluxe version is also gonna have all the stuff that we've looked at here. If you rewind this video, just a little bit to all the stuff we looked at with the deluxe version. Deluxe version will have that as well as all the stuff that we're looking at here. So really you're getting all the stuff from the standard release and the deluxe stuff is of course just adding on to that. Speaking adding on to this, I'm so compelled to display this gorgeous figure with a spectacular uh, spear that comes included with the figure. It's, as you can see, a shard, very well tailored in the sense that it does look like it's just been forged out, sort of just chiseled out from a rock face. Uh, again, it's just a spectacular looking sight. Slightly translucent. I don't know if rubbing my or moving my hand behind it is any bit the indicator that it's translucent plastic, but it gets a little bit more murkier, of course, as you get further along to the to the holstered uh, handled portion, the hilt portion of the spear. The spear has been wrapped its way up. You can see all these tattered rags wrapping them way up around the hilt and uh, get frayed a little bit off to the edge there. They also get a bit of a fraying about, about maybe three quarters of the way up as well. You get the tattered rags sort of just extending out from the handled hilt. But again, it's beautiful that this is, you know, it's fragile, unfortunately, because the, the makeup of this being plastic, but still a spectacular sight to be displayed with the figure. The one thing I wish this figure could have actually sadly had was a display stand, just because I am worrying, of course, something like this potentially breaking. I also want to potentially display this guy in a little bit more of a dynamic pose than simply just having him as a museum standing straight pose. Lending itself, of course, the idea of him throwing, um, jousting, <laughs> throwing the spear uh, across the sky also would be something I would consider displaying the figure with. But again, a lot of that can be chalked up to the fact because he doesn't have his display stand, I may want to grab a six scale standard, just a basic stand to display this guy on. I kind of wish that he could have come with a display stand, but again, for all the other things that this guy does come with, I'm willing to at least dismiss for the fact that he doesn't come included with that. Also comes with a pair of hands suited for holding the spear. Now, one thing actually that the instructions indicate as well is when you are ready to put the spear in the hand, it's best advised to spread the hands, the fingers at least away from the palm. Then when you put it around the handle, at least it does sit loose, but then you don't have to jeopardize damaging any bit of this or this sliding the hand into place. Now you can hold this double hand wield this if you so wanted to. Um, kind of like the idea of just displaying it really in all honesty in one hand, uh, just because then, you know, you can kind of just have this really impressive pose of having the walker with the shard spear draping off to the side of his leg. And last but certainly not least, in the way of its accessories, he comes with a dumbbell ball joint. A swappable means, if you want to take the head off, you've got that extra, uh, the extra secondary one to come included with it. It's not the first time, actually, Three Zero has introduced to us the idea of giving us a secondary ball joint. 
uh, Shin, I believe, was the last one we looked at on this channel, which used a secondary ball joint. Now, I actually found, I believe with Shin, that the ball joint that they included was actually better than the one that they had in the socket. It just kind of brought the head up a little bit higher. Could this also be the case here for the White Walker? Time will certainly tell. With that all being said, let's have a better look now at the White Walker and his outfit that he comes included with. Now again, this is going to be a two look, a second look, because of course the, the standard release is going to be looking like this. You in theory could take off all of this stuff, but the one thing that will be omitted sadly is going to be the aforementioned, previously mentioned leather skirt, as well as the uh, exposed feet. But in theory, again, you could take off all of this stuff. What you are going to be taking off though, is this really neat armor that they've put on to the White Walker, taken and crafted from the original source material in the show. It's sort of comprised of little individual, almost like platelets. It's actually quite a really neat looking armor in the show. 3-0 has done a really good job of actually recreating that in a figure form. It does look like it's got the hint traces of probably snow or ice that has settled its way onto the material in which he would have had in the show. Now it's multi-layered as well. There is on the outer side sort of a shawl or, or wrapping. It actually looks like it's the same material that we would have gotten from the Negan, another 3-0 release. But this is sort of just wrapped around the figure to uh, you're just going to unravel it the opposite direction and then you're going to take that off and again we're going to remove all the outfits uh, but again really nice job done on the feet you've got some snaps some strapped buckles there on the sides of the boots in which of course he would have been putting this on just before battle that's some spectacular detailing that's been done to the shoulder area this is actually plastic the rest of this is more like a, just a material fabric that they've used. The gauntlets are also a uh, plastic and as well as the uh, the boots, the boots down here. This appears the actual higher, higher section of the boots feels like it is of a softer plastic. Uh, it's not quite the fabric either. So it's kind of plastic in the boots, plastic of course most definitely in the feet, even though it does have, you know actually it does have a little bit of a softer feel right here where there's potential for a toe to bend, but it doesn't seem like you're going to be able to bend the feet at all. As we make our way up, camera panning all the way up, or actually me just moving the figure down, we are treated to a very cold exterior of the White Walker's face. I quite like this face a lot. There's almost something about a blank stare to it, and yet there still seems like there's something looking back at you. I think what they've done the best is the eyes here, which of course convey the sense of ice, the sense of frozenness that the White Walkers are known for. Sort of a very mummified face sculpt here, making use of some excellent additional paint to it. it looks like we've got some blacks, we've got some darker bluish grays, and of course we've also got some grays in there as well. Specifically, my favorite component to this is this area right here, right around its nose, right that goes around its eyes, sort of just kind of these encompassing, encompassing rings of texturing here. Even like these subtle, more subtle areas up at the here, around the, uh, the, <laughs> the forehead area, I suppose, does have very, very small little wrinkles in there as well. Now the uh, the hair, let me just flip this around. The hair is a uh, slightly more denser plastic. It unfortunately does limit when you are wanting to move the walker's head back and forth. A lot of the times as well, you'll have this little collared section just underneath it that seems to want to snag and grab onto the head as you're moving it back and forth. So that becomes perhaps a bit of an issue where you are moving the head back and forth. Of course, this section right here, you sort of can feel something scraping along the way. And I'm wondering if most of, not, if not all of it, is probably just the hair that's catching on to these little, these little points that are sticking up on the colored armor. I'm wondering if that's actually scraping its way across it. I don't know if that's going to be causing damage to the paint on the interior. Not that there's really a lot of paint. Probably looks like they're just keeping it to primarily the, the coloring of the plastic there. Nice job done on the sculpted hair. A little bit longer on the hairstyle there. It sort of looks like a rooted tree uh, that's kind of unearthed itself from the ground. 
again, I'm really, really happy with the head sculpt. I think they've done a really great job. Would have been neat to get an expression going on this guy's face as well. But, I mean, at oftentimes, the Game of Thrones White Walkers were really very emotionless. Uh, again, the White Walkers were, of course, in deep in battle as well. Specifically, this one as well. But I guess it is a good head sculpt. Maybe if they had given it any bit more expression, it could have probably taken a little bit away from the type of character that it is in the show. So maybe I digress, I pull back a little bit on that previous opinion. I'm very, again, very, very happy with what they've done with the head sculpt here. Now to get this guy undressed, there's a several different step process involved here. I guess the easiest one would be to take the this wrapping off first and foremost. It's really not attached to anything. You just unravel it, just keep unraveling until you've reached the stopping point of it being gone. And then you can proceed from there. You're going to go also go ahead and take the hands off and just pop them right off. Don't be alarmed also that the pegs come off with the hands because, again, when we looked at the alternate hands, they already had the pegs included. So you can just go ahead and take that off. You also want to take the gauntlets off as well from the forearms. Do that on the other side as well, just like that. And slide that one off as well. And then we're also going to do the exact same thing on the feet. Just take the feet pull them off of their bowl joint, and then we're gonna slide these off as well. Once you got the hands and the gauntlets and the feet and the tops of the boots off, then we can go ahead and focus our efforts to take the head off. I'm just gonna grab the shoulder area here, wiggle the head off of its supplied ball joint. There we go. And uh, just to also quickly show you, where's the other ball joint? There it is right there. There's a difference between the two. It does seem like, let me just flip it around and make sure it's the right size, right side. It does seem like the one that was included was a little bit shorter than the one that's supplied in the socket. I'm going to test both of them and see actually which head works better once we've gone ahead and taken off the rest of the armor here. Next, we're going to go ahead and take the shoulder pad section off. And again, it just does feel like it wants to stick to something what it's actually sticking to let me just peel off the other side so I can show you it's sticking to velcro there we go there's a velcro pad on one side and an equally sticky pad on the other side which will actually hook onto the little under the opposite hooking sections of the, uh, the velcro tape on the underside I like that they actually used velcro velcro Unlike an adhesive, I said it was sticky, it's not really sticky, it's just the way that, you know, well, we all know how Velcro works. But it's nice that they actually went with Velcro just to kind of keep this from shifting around. Often at times, if there is something like this that's going to come off, they usually just leave it to just sitting on the shoulders, sh sitting, I should say, on the torso. And in resulting of that, it's just going to shift back and forth. Putting a little bit of Velcro on there, it's not really something you're going to see from... Well, it, you're not going to see it like this, obviously, and it's also going to prevent, again, those shoulder pads from shifting around on you. We're then going to spin the figure around, and this whole back section is also on a Velcro closure. Just un, unfasten that, if you will. Bring the arms forward, and then you're going to slide this whole torso section. It's easiest to open it up on the back then just grab the sleeves and very carefully pull it off until you've completely pulled off the whole upper torso armor. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Well, not quite the exact same thing. This skirting here is actually just elasticized. So very carefully, once again, you're gonna just slide this down the legs and once you get past the thigh section, it's a lot easier then to continue on your journey take that off and then we're going to do the exact same thing here with the pants a whole lot of stripping down later we've kind of got the bare basics of what the white walker will look like of course without its clothing this of course will quickly become remedied when we add the additional leather skirting and we add the feet down below but i just want to show you in the meantime what this figure does look like once everything is really off of it you can kind of see how the joints will work these will of course be hidden by the skirts 
the top torso will still remain pretty much exposed as well to be said for the legs again really nice detailing there and torso we'll talk a little bit more about that when we kind of put the white walker together I kind of feel bad that he's just sort of standing here without a head without of course hands and feet and very very much naked Luckily for the supplied skirt, it's also opened on Velcro. So it means that you don't have to stretch it back over the torso area, run it up the legs until you finally have closed it off. Instead, you just open up the Velcro, close this off, stretch, I should say, the skirt across, push down the Velcro, and then you've got yourself the finished skirt. Now we can go ahead and add the feet to the White Walker, and then we can go ahead and add his hands and, of course, his head finishing up the remaining steps. We've now got ourselves the White Walker in his, well, in his skirted look. This is, of course, a debatable topic as to which you prefer a little bit more. This is certainly would be an, also an argument as to my, maybe why you would want to also pick up a secondary one of these, just so that you could display the White Walker with the armor up, or dressing it down, you can have it in the skirt. Now, I didn't forget about this. This, of course, was the secondary ball joint that came included with the figure. If we look at the figure now, this is just, this is the regular ball joint. And again, like looking at the way that the head is portrayed currently now, maybe I admit there is a little bit of additional length added to the neck that I feel could be shortened a little bit. So what we are gonna do, this is what this head sculpt looks like. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. Just pop the ball joint off once again. And then we're going to pull off this ball joint, which can be a little bit more trickier. You may want to grab yourself a pair of pliers or something just to help unroot the ball joint. And we're going to replace it with the one that came also included standalone in the pack. And this is what it looks like then. When we've changed out the ball joint, once again, the older ball joint to the newer, newer one that we have here. I will admit it does do a good job of shortening off the neck. I almost feel though that it could be just a hair bit longer. It does seem like the head being just the size that it is sort of envelops up the spacing of the neck. Maybe again, if it was just a little, little tiny bit longer. But I think that the other ball joint is too long. Um, it is too too much neck, too much visible neck that I would only keep really again if I'm putting the armor on this guy. So let's have again a close look detailed at all the spectacular sculpting that 3-0 has put into this figure. Here I'm feeling as if it was probably cast in a darker plastic and then they simply have just dry brushed the very outer layer here getting this really cool depth effect where the darker color is still kind of sitting in the recessed areas and the lighter color is sitting sort of in the foreground. It does a great job of bringing out a lot of the textures that normally would be so much lost if proper paint wasn't applied. I love this section here. This is one of my favorite areas of his torso. Sort of these, kind of it looks like fangs even, this section right here. Now the torso is a soft plastic, at least this part feels like it's a slightly softer plastic. Hopefully you can see that with the way that I'm running my thumb along it. It does give much needed additional articulation. And even when you tilt the torso back, this is a sign really of craftsmanship into these six scale figure releases that for you to be able to move the torso back like this, you still don't see any open gap. They've finished it even further past. So that if there is the off chance that you move the torso back, it doesn't look unfinished. I think that's actually quite good. Again, you've got this very, almost very much like an elephant hide, really. These very bold wrinkles that are running down its arm here to the much larger clawed hands. Detailing in the paint added to the fingernails, especially well received here. Again, it's probably a case where they've used a darker plastic and then they painted only the surface layer over top of it, giving you this nice kind of depth effect as we move our way down the legs, very much now exposed legs that weren't there before. And we get now down to the bandaged feet, which I have to say look quite good on this. Being that this also is a fabric, it's a little bit more susceptible to fraying. You may find yourself just kind of keeping like a little small pair of craft scissors, just sort of trimming off unnecessary little strands that are left behind. Or on the other polar end of that, you may want to very well leave it just sort of adds to the rough nature that these walkers look like when they're dragging themselves through the snow and the otherwise terrain of Westeros. But again, really nice looking figure. 
It's posable where it needs to be posable, and it certainly does have the options available for swapping out to two different distinct looks. Let's have a look at its posability now. Being that the figure did have that double ball joint that we looked at, that dumbbell ball joint, means that you can rotate the head all the way around. It doesn't seem to have as much the restriction, but yeah, again, you're still going to have the issue where the beard is catching itself to the side of its torso, sort of preventing the head from being rotated all the way around. The head can tilt up, not really too much though, can tilt down quite a bit more, and can angle back and forth. A lot of that can be aided for the fact that you do have a stem with a ball joint on both ends. As we've already looked at, the upper torso does have a considerable ball joint. You can rotate that all the way around. It has a hinge on both the arms. They ratchet it out. They almost even do sound like they have a ratcheted joint. I like that. Kind of keeps... If I feel as if a ratcheted, ratcheted joint sort of guarantees you that the longevity of these limbs not getting loose stays a little bit longer. Like you just get a more... Because it does ratchet, it sort of catches itself along the way and you don't have the risk down the road of having droopy arms, which sometimes six scale figures have down the road. But like I said, the arms rotate all the way around. Uh, it does have a bend at the elbow, which also allows the arm to rotate the forearm to at least rotate, and the hands also rotate all the way around, hinging back and forth. Deep underneath its skirt, it also has a waist swivel. The legs ratchet out as well, like loving the fact that these ratcheted joints, ratchet joint forward and back on the leg, it has a single and also a double hinge knee. It's just a little bit stiffer on this one leg. There's the secondary hinge joint right there. Uh, and then also the feet also look like they, well, they were on a double ball joint as well. So the feet can angle back and forth, an ankle pivot, if you will, and up and down motion as well. And in theory, you can also rotate the feet all the way around. Like I said, periodically, you may feel the knee just to kind of trim off these extra hairs that are leaving their way from the bandages or again you can completely leave them in place it's entirely it's entirely up to you and we're just kind of straighten off the walker like i said the only thing i wish this figure could have had and often at times uh, when it comes to three zero releases they don't always include them is display stands kind of wish this guy could have come with a really neat display stand it wouldn't have to necessarily be an overly complicated stand certainly not something that would have to have had terrain or or like you know the the makings of something that landscape that it could have walked across at the very basic bare bones circular display base Maybe with, again, just like Game of Thrones or something along the top of it. Excluding that, I absolutely love this White Walker. The hardest part, again, much like a lot of these releases that have alternate outfits being the deluxe release coming with the leather skirt. It certainly entertains the idea of not just having the one, but getting a secondary one and having it in displayed in the two different distinct looks. Normally, you don't want to use the words blank, vacant, stare to describe a new six scale figure that you picked up. Here, it's rather quite the opposite. The blank, vacant stare that 3-0 have sculpted into the face here of the White Walker gives you a very creepy, eerie look. The way it's staring right at you, but kind of staring through you. Um, it's motionless, cold exterior really does work well for this figure release. And initially, I did think that the the figure could have had a little bit more of an expression, but really settling on my final thoughts in final looks here, I really think they landed on the best head sculpt for a character such as the White Walker. The great thing about this particular figure is that it gives you really two looks. Normally, you can't really take the clothing off of your figures that you have in your collection because you're often treated to just a regular bare buck body underneath, the regular same body that's used for all the other figures. Here, it's rather quite a nice little treat. Taking off the armor of the six scale figure release here of White Walker, you're treated to bare bones, literally bare bones. You're seeing the mummified sort of corpse remain of what was a, a creature, a, an actual living creature. Now, of course, left just to its cold bare bones exterior. I do really like the mummified look of its textured body. So again, it does give you the two different looks if you do pick up the deluxe version, because the deluxe version will give you the alternate clothing of the leather skirt, though it's not, not much of additional clothing. You, again, you're just sort of taking things off. And of course, you get yourself the bare feet, which is the best way to complete the overall look. Other than that, it doesn't really have with any other accessories other than the sharded spear. I love the look of this spear. And of course, he would really feel naked without it. So I'm glad that they did include it. The only thing I kind of wish that this figure once again could have incorporated 
often 3.0 doesn't include these with their six scale figure releases, is a display stand. As great as these figures look, I'd like to be able to put them on a stand and then often at times put them in a little bit more dynamic pose than simply just having them standing straight like I'm doing right now. I might actually delve into my own storage, see if I can find just a regular basic display stand in which I can perch the figure atop of it. The only other thing I would probably have said is the the shawl, that little wrapping that goes around his waist area. I wish that that was Velcroed or some means that it could have attached to itself. Often, just really when you're dressing him back up into his armor, you're really just kind of wrapping that around his waist and then tucking it in on itself. It may become loose, so maybe a little bit of Velcro on that could have also aided to sort of keep that also in place. A great, fantastic release from 3.0. Certainly with the upcoming new season, and I believe the final season also as well of Game of Thrones, which really does make me sad to hear. What a great time to pick up a new figure release from 3.0. If you are interested in picking up the White Walker for yourself, most sites are often currently showing him as a pre-order. They're showing him currently with a Q1 2019 release. So he actually should be shipping now if you guys wanted to jump on board and pick this guy up before he sells out. The beauty of a lot of 3.0 releases, the White Walker being no exception, is the price point for this guy is around a $200 to $204 price point. You really can't beat that when you compare it to other companies that often at times are charging the very basic price of most of their male figures at around $230 to $240. $204 for this guy is a steal. Today we were having a look, thanks to the folks, by the way, at 3.0 for supplying this. We we're having a look at the Game of Thrones White Walker 1-6 scale collectible figure. And, 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 we were having a look at the deluxe version that came included with the leather skirt and the bare wrapped feet. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other 3.0 reviews, I've got a whole ton of them. There's a playlist of 3.0 six scale figure reviews. I think that's actually what the playlist is called. Be sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below and periodically make sure you swing on over to 3.0's website to get an updated idea of some of their future releases slated to come out. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next time.